Welcome listeners, it's a Thursday and I have a hot chocolate in hand, ready to share a tale with you fresh off the press. Mm-mm-mm. For those who have sent stories in, rest assured I'll be putting time aside this weekend to edit and hopefully record some or all of them. Today's episode though is very different from my normal stories. I've actually stumbled across a Reddit site recently called Writing Prompts. Have any of you heard of this one? Basically, uh, for you budding authors out there, it's a place where single sentences are uploaded that instigate a level of creative thought. So today's episode is based on one such writing prompt, as it were, and I'll read out the prompt to you first, and then follow up with the story itself. I know, right? Stories is shaking it up a little. Okay. The prompt is, Humans are the deadliest and rarest species in the known universe. Often, Search parties go missing due to a singular encounter with a human ship. It has recently come to light that there is an entire planet full of them. And the title of today's story is The Universal Council is in Chaos. And your author is Jamaican Dynamite. For a relatively short amount of time, the encounters with the Sol Res, known to themselves as humans, have dominated the headlines. These beings, which existed in the absolute fringe of the galaxy known as M801, had become a thorn in the Council's side over several cycles. While not the biggest or strongest species, they made up for it with their brutality, tenacity, hearty build, and sheer numbers. Ships lost in that particular part of the galaxy have reported as many as several thousands on a single ship. Several thousand. There are top-tier Universal Council warships that barely have a hundred soldiers of any species. They are also known in studies to be ridiculously immune to most biological threats. Their species not only consumes dihydrogen monoxide, they need it to live. They come from an atmosphere composed mainly of nitrogen and oxygen, a atmosphere known for slowly poisoning those not acclimated to it. At a rate so minuscule, at first, one would not know their fate until the effects became clear. They can survive in palement, dismemberment, and even the failing of certain vital organs. When injured, they can become even more violent, downing opponents for up to an hour prior to immobilization and or death. However, despite all this, they are rare. No one on the council had actually seen one of these beings in person. All information about them are relayed from ships that are now classified as lost en route. Rumors exist that humans are sought after by some distant species for a variety of reasons. Thus, abductions, smuggling, and piracy are rumored to run with reckless abandon in the sector of M801. M801 is since derided by many by the adoption of a nickname the Dirtlings have given it some time ago. Milky Way. Which brings me to my point, Lady Mazazi announced to the chamber as she glanced around for confirmation amongst the ranks. We have learned from intel provided by our explorers that the humans are not just a pirate species. Council, they have been revealed to have a home planet located just off a star in Milky Way known as Sol. They have no centralized government, No galactic treaty, no council approved ship documentation, and an astounding 7,000 plus languages. We've only had time to translate the most widely spoken. And from the audio logs of the Exvari Cold, lost half a cycle ago, we translated this. The clip played as they all watched on the display. The shot leveled out to reveal several humans of different colors glaring at the Oculus. To whoever is watching these, hello. We're going to let you in on a little secret. Humanity doesn't take kindly to your exploitation of our flight space. We also don't appreciate the abductions of many of our loved ones, nor the wanton murder of civilians committed by ships with these emblems. The crowd angrily protested as they saw the Universal Council logo revealed on the screen. The shot then snapped back to the group of humans, We want you to understand, we don't appreciate your hostility towards us or our home. We wish to meet you on peaceful terms with your leaders, but if war is what you seek, 
Mazazi herself felt ill at what she knew was next. The human yanked up something into view, and the crowd collectively reeled in horror. In his hand, he held the severed head of Azvari, one of the most feared beings in space. Many in the room froze in fear and trauma at the sight, and several even left the chamber. War is what you'll get. We have a saying where I'm from, don't start none, and there won't be none. I hope we've made ourselves clear. Tread with caution. The feed cut off finally as the room sat in utter silence. Readings, Readings have, have measured, measured the population, population of the humans. Mirzazi began numbly. To, to be, be in, in the, the billions. billions. Council. She listened as the room began to panic again. The council? Leader Drehai announced suddenly. Requests a mission to be fulfilled, Lady Mirzazi. Yes, yes, my liege. liege. Mazazi bowed. Prepare an expedition to M801, Drehai commanded. We shall see what these dirtlings have in store for us. Mazazi couldn't believe her luck. While Drehai was completely sure of his demands, and had rallied the council to agree to the idea of an expedition to the Soul Star system, she did not expect him to make her go. But as he reminded her, Many of her species would kill to be in the position to lead a council-approved mission. But this felt off. Her mind flashed back to the Svari on the screen. What led them to do that? Lady Mazazi. Her second-in-command, Axtur, one of the toughest warriors in her unit. He'd accompanied her on countless endeavors up to this point. He was the biggest, scariest person she knew, and for once, that made her feel at ease. Axter, she greeted. What is your question? Lady, I request a briefing for myself and the others. He snorted. <sighs> Very well, Mazazi sighed. Leader, Drehai has commissioned us to venture to M801. The Milky Way sector, Axter inquired. What? Four. We're investigating the disappearances of multiple ships on council members in that area over the past few cycles. It's been confirmed much of it has to do with those humans that live off the edge of Sol. Cursed dotlings, Axtur growled. They must learn their place in this universe. Exactly, Mazazi nodded. Which is why the news that they have a homeworld with billions of inhabitants is a major threat to Council security, as well as possibly the fate of the entire universe. They have captured our equipment, and who knows what else. Billions of them. <sighs> Axtur reconsidered. Yes, I'm afraid so. We have to play this light. I'm afraid we have no clue of their fighting ability. The only evidence we have is a video of them eradicating members of the Zvari in an unknown environment. Axtur, please, ready the others. We'll launch as soon as available. You heard her grunts? Axtur demanded. Get to work. ISS Mastodon, Soul System 20XX. Victor awoke to the banging on the door and groggily slunk out of bed. The nap had helped him readjust to artificial gravity again, but the banging on the door did not help the hangover. Yeah, who's this? Victor yawned as he put a t-shirt on. Who do you think it is, bruh? Of course, it's Eric. Every time Victor touches down, Eric is the absolute first motherfucker to show up at the door. Eric, fuck's the matter with you? It's like three in the morning. Morning my ass, Eric gestured. We're in space, dude. It's not like the sun comes up in the morning and goes down at night out here. Look, bring yourself on. We gotta meet up with Lynx in a bit. We're working now, Victor mentioned. Please, Mick. Like mercs like us get to sleep. <laughs> Eric cackled. So how was Texas, man? See the folks and all? Oh, yeah, man. Texas was good and all. You know, hugged mum, went drinking and fishing with dad, ate a giant steak, visited Houston and Corpus Christi, ate another giant steak. Good times, good times. That's what's up, 
Eric agreed as he vaped a drag off his hitter. How was Oakland? Vic asked as they passed the storefront on their way to the transport station. Same deal. See family, friends, hit up a sideshow, don't get shot, get some grass for the flight home. Eric rambled. You just love giving TSA a hard time, huh? Oh yeah, got to see my little bro Dozer. He was on leave. The crazy one in the army? Drives mechs and stuff? Vic thought for a moment. Yep, that gang. Didn't he nearly get kicked out? Something about Carolina? Oh yeah, he got into some galactic incident and ended up breaking the sound barrier and busting out a lot of windows around the Californian flight path. He still is legally not allowed to land in Charleston. Jesus, Vic thought. Research Quarters, ISS Mastodon. It's about time you two showed up. Lynx frowned as she watched them arrive. She sat the equipment down and ditched the HoloLens she wore half the day. Hey Vic, you look terrible right now. Love you too, Lynx, Vic mimicked randomly. Can someone tell me why I'm up so early in the morning, please? Okay, a couple of things we need to talk about. First of all, we need to get some crucial supplies for the ship coming up here at the end of the month. The boosters need retuning on the port side. Maybe patch up some of that damage from the fight with that alien ship? Speaking of which, and pardon my French, what the fuck is wrong with you? Who? Me? Vic realized in confusion. Yeah, you! Lynx waved her hands. You cut a guy's head off! Whoa, 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 Vic interrupted. First of all, George cut his head off. That's not me. Yeah, George did that shit, Eric confirmed grimly as he continued smoking. You shot a fucking video of you holding the guy or whatever it was. Its head got cut off, Vic, and you sent their friends the video. The hell is the matter with you? First of all, I didn't cut his head off, Vic reminded her. Damn. Okay, yes, I held the thing, and I did film that. But to be fair, that was what the clients wanted. Remember? Kill them, rescue survivors, and send a message. Remember that? I'm just saying it wasn't cool. Lynx deadpanned. I didn't like it, that's for sure, Vic admitted instinctively. I mean, did you see what they did to those people? No one should look like that. No one. Alive or dead? And I've seen someone get gauze gunned. Lynx shook off the idea of the photos. That's true, but how do you know if this won't come back on us? It won't, trust me. The fuck are they gonna do? Send another ship to come get us? What are they gonna say? Hey, Dirtling, my name is Ingio Montoya. You killed my father, prepared to die. What? Are you done? Lynx asked bitterly. Seriously. We've only done crazier stuff before. How bad could it be? Vic jested. Nearing the Soul Quadrant, madam, Axtur announced over the comms. Thank, Thank you, Corporal. This, this begins, begins now. Mazazi confirmed as they reached the edge of the Kuiper Belt. This ends part one and part two. The Universal Council is in chaos. Whoa! Well, lovely listeners, I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did recording it. It was a blast. Different voices, different challenges. If you were in space and could pick any creature possible, who would you pick? I've always loved insects or elementals, so maybe some sort of strange hybrid. Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this story, let me know and I'll pass it on to the author, whose name is, just to remind you, Jamaican Dynamite. And you can reach me here, stories, fables, ghostly tales at gmail.com. And lovely listeners, I won't be uploading tomorrow as I won't be at a place that, well, lets me upload. <laughs> but I'll be making it up to you next week for sure in shoutouts and stories. Trust me. If you don't hear from me tomorrow, have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you here with your hot beverage ready to share a story with you. And on that note, it's that time. This is a place where stories live, and you tell-tellers come to listen. Enjoy your day or night, and join me every weekday 
for our creepy tradition. And as always, till next time.